We are back. Season four of the Craft Beer Connoisseurs podcast. I'm Tyler, and along with me are two other hosts and a producer. For those of you who are new to the podcast, we like to showcase breweries, their beers, and conclude every episode with a thematic-ish conversation. If you're a casual listener or a seasoned vet, you know what to expect. Producers continue to change throughout episodes, but the same old connoisseurs will continue to provide top-tier content. Please feel free to listen to all of our previous episodes and producer specials to get an insight into all the breweries and beers we've mostly enjoyed. And whether you're new or returning, we are pleased to be your favorite craft beer podcast. Follow us on Instagram at Craft Beer Cons, send a friend request on Untapped, or subscribe on YouTube at Craft Beer Connoisseurs. Also drop a comment, like, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Now for today's episode. Welcome to the Craft Beer Connoisseurs. I'm Tyler. I'm Chris, and along with us today is producer Carl. We are here with Carl, but we are not here with Brett. That's right, Brett. <laughs> Brett was unavailable today, and uh, we were available. Yeah. And so was Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Carl Carl was available. And so we are recording. We, we are here. here is an episode for everyone. Now, today's episode, we're going to be reviewing TWB Co-op out of Kitchener, Ontario. Nice. And uh, as usual, we're going to be having two beers. The first is Wobbly Wheel, which is an American IPA. And the second is Order of the Sleeping Car, which is a porter. Very good. Very good. Now, before we continue, now, we would normally go into a conversation about uh, what we're going to be talking about later on. And then we do the brewery and the beer and the beer and the beer. However, we have, we've been off for a bit. We have. And I think we should just... You know, go, acknowledge that. Go direct with this. We 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 know that people have been wondering where we've been, and we haven't really been um, doing a great job on communication. And so we will own that. Yeah, I think I think that's fair, Carl. Yeah, Carl especially. Carl has not said a word. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's like, aren't these producers supposed to be quiet? <laughs> yeah, wasn't somebody supposed to do something? So I think it's it's good to just kind of address it. But um, yeah, life has been busy. Twenty twenty four has been a chaotic year. Uh, so far, unfortunately, uh, we've had some really important people in our lives pass away. Um, I mean, my grandfather not too long ago. So there's been that. Family is kind of taken priority. Um, we've been very busy in our gardens. Well, I was just going to say gardens. You can't forget gardens. <laughs> I think it's been very therapeutic for everybody to kind of get out. Uh, sun shining, get some good vibes going. But uh, the podcast kind of took a bit of a, uh, a pause. Yeah. Um, not to say it won't again for a little bit, but we'll see. We're, we're going to be reaching out to some breweries and I'm having some conversations about uh, getting some beers for some future episodes. But I think that's good. Maybe we can we can promise our listeners that if there is another pause, we'll let them know. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. I, you know, I, it wasn't sitting easy with me that we, uh, we didn't put anything out there. So, uh, you know. Yeah. Hey, that's a good idea. All right. So that's enough of that. Um, we're glad that you are here. We're glad that we're here. And uh, I'm not going to say we're glad that Fife's not, but alas, here we are. <laughs> so, All right. <laughs> so to finish up the episode, we're going to be uh, discussing our summer plans and activities, which hopefully is going to be some more podcast recording. Be right back. All right. We're back. See, we weren't gone too long. No. <laughs> we communicated. O- only what? What's that transition? Uh, 10 seconds, yeah, maybe? Less than, I mean, seven and a half. I think. She goes quick, though. <laughs> yeah, it does. All right, so TWB, which stands for Together We're Bitter, is located at 300 Mill Street, Unit 1 in Kitchener, which is the beginning unit in an industrial plaza. So what way to in, you know introduce yourself to the whole plaza? Then and it's it's Unit 1, so that makes sense. The, the math checks. <laughs> We like that. Then a nice brewery being out there. So yeah, uh, TWB is a co-op, which opened in 2016. So it's not the first co-op that we've actually had on the podcast. No, it's um, not. And hopefully not the last. Uh, but yeah, to reiterate, 2016. And they're focused on you know building those strong relationships with the community. And we see that. And I mean, that really is the roots of the co-op. So it's nice to see that they, uh, they bring in that community partner aspect. Um, they use all the resources, platforms to make the community community a better place. And of course, hopefully, we'll see. We will. Making delicious, high quality, approachable craft beer. Now, we have had some. Um, uh, I mean, some of us have had some. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that in a, in a few minutes. Uh, but from academics to welders, community advocates to graphic designers, their six founding members came together over this vision. Uh, they spent every ounce of their spare time building scr- the scrappy little brewery all from scratch. 
uh, from developing the business plan to learning how to brew on the German-made all-in-one brew, brew house. Uh, that's a mouthful. It is a mouthful. Uh, rescued from a storage locker uh, to building a bar top out of an old bowling alley. That's cool. Uh, everything was DIY. I wonder if they um, used any of the, the fault lines uh, at the bowling alley. Of the know. bowling alley? You know, I don't up. know. You can't cross the fault line. You know, so you stay on your side of the bar, the fault line's there, and then <laughs> the server's on the other side. Yeah, maybe, right? Like right in the middle. It's yeah. like this is the bartender side, yeah. this is the patron yeah. side. You you cross that fault line, it's it's a penalty. Yeah, you're you're you're, you're done. You're out. Beer's over. Oh my goodness. That is really kind of cool though. I, I like that. A very interesting um again, t- the storage locker aspect too. Yeah, I wonder wonder if if they... Yeah, I know. Go ahead, go ahead. I know what you're going to say. Well, I was just going to say, I wonder if they knew that it was in the storage locker, if it was one of those just by the storage locker. The hidden gems? Yeah. Yeah, just tucked away in the bag? Oh my God, we've been looking for one of these. Yeah, there's a slab (laughs) of a bowling alley just sitting beside it. It's like, wait a second, we can do those. (laughs) I'm surprised the the Together We're Bitter wasn't changed to something else because you have, like, it's very cool, the story, right? Yeah, you have a lot of you have six different people coming together. They have different backgrounds. You got a lot to play with. You got a storage locker. You got an old bowling alley. Yeah, and like the names, uh, I haven't looked into the names of their beers enough. I don't think, but maybe maybe they kind of play on that a little bit. Yeah, like uh, I don't know, a five ten banana split you know, stout. You know, <laughs> storage locker lager. Yeah, there's a lot that we can. I mean, we're, geez, we're just giving ideas for free. We're gonna we're gonna look up all the names and they're all gonna be yeah, in they're there. all taken. <laughs> like nothing we said was original. Like oh, okay, that's cool. You know, I mean, they've got they've got birds and bees. That's got to come from something. Yeah, you know. Oh, well, yeah, well, yeah, birds and bees, and then you also have a Pullman Porter. So okay. Uh, I don't okay. know. Maybe those shouldn't go hand in hand. Mm. There's some 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 innuendo in there you can pull. Something like that, yeah. All right, let's uh, move on from that. <laughs> Digress a little bit. Carl's looking at us like, boys, it's the first <laughs> one back. You're, st- you're still as unhinged as usual. <laughs> um, so, yeah, when they opened, uh, they began, began selling half pints and oh. filling growlers. Uh, Carl's shaking his, his head on that. So we can get confirmation, so that's good. Yeah. Um, but they've added a patio. They've had tons of events, an online shop, and then do regular canning as well. Um, so some of the changes, I guess, kind of came around the pandemic, which we've seen this, right. Is yeah. You have to kind of shift and, and kind of, um, divert from really maybe your original business plan and, and think, think fast. For sure. So they, they have made some changes. Um, one of their team members likes to joke. This is information that we've got from Carl that TWB went through a dozen business models in as many as months. Um, wow. Which Again, that's what I said, right? You you kind of have to change on the fly. You do what you got to do, basically. Right? And I mean, they've come out the other side, um, looking pretty good. Now, Carl, did you talk to this team member and get that joke straight from yeah, straight from straight, the source? Straight from the mouth. <laughs> no, part of the re- part of the research. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was that was available online apparently. Um, so one of the reasons that their business could maneuver through these challenges was due to the strength of the people around the table. Um, running a co-op means managing a business democratically. Uh, sometimes, you know. That's what we like. We like that. Yeah, but sometimes that can be messy, right? We like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it also means there are more people to chip in when there are issues, yeah. uh, more people to come up with ideas, support one another when things are, aren't are running smoothly. Um, they have someone on their team uh, who can fix a pipe or fix a logo, build a website or build a table. The do-it-yourself approach has, has served them very well over the years. So We got nobody on this team that can fix a pipe. Uh, uh, no, Carl. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> girls are hard no now. A logo, yeah, we got that. Yeah, we could do we that. Could build a website. We've looked at. That. Yeah, we could do that. A table, sure. Yeah. You see my garden? I could build the table. I never said it would be a good table. <laughs> One of these guys that you know forgets a leg. You know. Uh, yeah. Oh no, I'll give it four legs. Okay, good. Uh, you you just. It's not going to be fancy or anything. That's fair. I now I've I've gone back into some of their their beer names because uh, you know I was kind of curious if there was anything that we could kind of you know suggest, uh, but they've got it on lockdown. Oh yeah. Yeah, you know the Odie Mick Oat Face. Okay. Uh, the Milky Mil- Mick Milk Face. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> you know, there's, I mean, the, the 510 banana split stout sounds pretty good, but I mean, you can call it splitty mix split face, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be a theme. <laughs> it is. There's, there's some good ones in here, which is, which is nice. And then follow up with Vietnamese spiced smoked ale. So hmm, okay. there's some creativity in there, and we like that. Well, I would expect that because on on top they have uh, 348 beers. So uh, we're not going to go through all of them and name them all here. We got one, oh, okay, all right. <laughs> uh, but they do have an average on those 348 of 3.67 out of five. So yeah, pretty good. Not bad. Um, now Brett, who is not here, has had uh, the most beers. Uh, out of everyone. Oh, my God. Yeah. What a surprise. Uh, so he's had 13 uh, f- beers from TWB. Two of them uh, were rated at four and a half. Right. One of those was Confection Connection. Uh, so that's a cool name. Uh, milkshake collab <laughs> with cool Job name. Site. Uh, and then the other one was Volk Summer, which is a Cot Buster. Cot Buster? <laughs> Don't know that type Cot of beer. Cot Buster? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> All right, yeah, not that. Um, I have had one. Uh, I gave it a three point two five, and it was the ALX, which was um, the ESB. Mm. Chris, what what you got? What you got? So today? I've actually had none. So this will be a maiden voyage for me uh, for TWB. Another great beer name, maiden voyage. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, what about Carl? Do you want to do Carl's? Yeah, I'll do Carl. I can hit Carl up. Carl's had seven, um, okay. three at four. Um, some common threads here uh with brett confection connection oh okay uh the musa lemu uh with apricot actually i did see that one on there yeah um and uh one of the beers that we're actually having today oh but we won't tell you which one (laughs) stay tuned (laughs) so uh at the brewery they also have lots of events um including having food trucks there euchre live music trivia nights uh, even bingo. Uh, so if you're interested in bingo, we talk about the bingo cards often here. So it's go to true. TWB. Now, before uh, you run out the door, you might want to know the hours. See what I did there? That, I, I like that. Thank you. I like that. I just want to point out because you were absolutely flat on it. <laughs> just <laughs> flat. Um, yeah, before you run out the door, you're going to want to know their hours. So current hours for TWB, Tuesday, Thursday, 3 p.m. to 9 um, Friday, Saturday, 11 to 9, and then Sunday, 11 to 6. Okay. Pretty good spread there. Pretty good. Now, I would hope they would because, again, it's a co-op. So yeah. everybody should be chipping in. And right. if you're not pulling your own weight, um, you know who you are. <laughs> yeah. I just want to see, like, the meme for Spider-Man. Everybody's pointing yeah. at each other right now. Like, oh, my God, how do they know? <laughs> Carl did his research. I know it's you. We're calling you out. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, as always, we are going to link to TWB's information on our social media. For sure. Now, let's be all in on beer. Number one. Beer back. All right. Thank you to Amanda from TWB for recording these beers on today's episode. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for being patient. Um, because True. we did get these beers a little while ago and we should have had the episode out. And again, the preamble, uh, kind of alludes to why we didn't. So, um, appreciate that Amanda TWB. You guys have been great. Heaven hounded us to get the, the episode out and, uh, we appreciate that. So, yeah, cool. Awesome. <clears throat> All right. Beer uh, numero one is wobbly wheel, which is an American IPA. Um, kind of takes its name from the industrial workers of the world nicknamed Wobblies. Oh, okay. So we got we got wobbly wheels. Got some wobblies. So this is a nice little wobbly pop for a wobbly wheel. Um, Six point seven ABV, forty seven IBUs. Chris, tell us a little bit about this beer before we uh, hop into it. Yeah. So uh, first of all, a little discrepancy. The can actually says six point five percent. Oh, so <whistles> difference between. Uh, Untapped in the can. Yeah, a little wobbly. Uh, But this beer is listed as having an aroma of fruitiness, stone fruits, melon, and cleanliness. Um, The appearance is supposed to be copper-colored, red, pouring clear, with good head formation and retention. Okay. Uh, The flavor is... Oh, yeah, keep going. Yeah, it's supposed to have lots of hot flavor, but low bitterness and a slight sweetness. 
do you want to touch on uh, <laughs> yeah, some well, of the other Carl, things that we should yeah, expect? Carl's saying, we just both at the same time went, so yeah. Carl's saying, Tyler, talk about mouthfeel. So I will. Uh, medium carbonation, clean finish, slightly sweet with lots of hop flavor, but no harsh bitterness. Okay, so we'll be looking for that. If I get a har- uh, if I get harsh bitterness, I'm going to be disappointed. Call it out. Um, so we're looking for an overall impression of a well-balanced beer between sweetness, bitterness, hoppiness, booziness, clean fermentation, multi-bodied that allows the hops to come through. I did say that this year is going to have some more uh, malts. More malt, malt bodies. You did. You did. Untapped. That was your prediction. Untapped. What do you got uh, for ourselves? So you can always follow us at Craft Beer Connoisseurs uh, on Untapped and on Instagram at Craft Beer Cons. The overall rating for Wobbly Wheel is 3.78 out of 5 with a little over 1,500 check-ins. Okay. And there are 39 5 out of 5s. All right, all right, all right. And we know none of those came from Brett um, because he didn't have a 5 before. So oh, that. right. He did not. Yeah. Four, it took you a second to figure 5. out what I was talking about there. Yeah, right? 4.5 was the uh, the highest that he had had from TWB. The train left the station, but it had a wobbly wheel, so... Was glad, able to catch up. Glad you got there. <laughs> um, all right, let's grab that glass and grab that can and let's open her up. All right. Very nice. Chris, what do we, uh, what do we drink this out of today? Well, this is an IPA, so we are drinking this out of an IPA glass. Very nice, very so, nice. So uh, make sure to use your proper glassware. All right, got a little pour. I'll let you uh, pour. I was pouring while you were uh, talking there. Uh, I was actually just going to just jump right into it. Copper well, on color. You, like you're you're about to drink it. Yeah, I just, oh. you know, it's been a while. It has. You know, I just said, this looks really good, so I should just consume it. <laughs> Got to just let it let it breathe in the glass for a little I bit. I know, I know. Let, let my hand kind of warm it up. Copper, copper, copper. Copper, yeah. It, and it's kind of um, a little translucent, translucent as yeah. well, yeah. That, um, not as dark as, or uh, not as opaque as okay. you might expect from an IPA. Very good. Um, it looks like medium to low carbonation on it. Not too bad. Uh, just kind of yeah. looking at uh, some of those uh, b- bubbles. <laughs> Pretty good head though. Up, yeah, good head retention. Um, smells. Anything that you smell off that, or anything that you can, can kind of can pick up on? I'm getting a a little bit of well, I'm getting a lot actually, quite a bit of maltiness uh, yeah. coming through on the nose. Um, and I think it's the melon coming through on the nose. Okay. Yeah, I I feel like I'm getting a bit of the stone fruit in the melon for sure. Yeah, um, but very malt driven. Like I, f- I feel like that's where this is going to kind of get a lot of flavor from. Yeah, malty, and then with some some fruit flavor thrown in there. Yeah, and that's probably coming from from that hops. Yep. Um, again, no harsh bitterness. Right. Right. So we're looking for that balance. We are. We're looking for that balance because that that's what it said. No harsh bitterness. You know, a good. Um, a balance between the sweetness, bitterness, hoppiness, and booziness. I don't know if this will taste too overly boozy. I mean, it's a six and a half. So yeah, it's nothing crazy. Like it's it's average yeah. for an IPA from an ABV perspective. Yeah. Um, wait your whistle, Chris. Go ahead. You sure? Yeah. You know, I okay. wanted to jump into it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna time myself out here. You know. Okay. Okay, Carl's got his going too. So. Yeah, I've had a couple sips. Um, there's bitterness, but not harsh. I, I wouldn't say that it's harsh. <laughs> not not the IPAs of are you, old. I was where gonna say, are you afraid of the consequences of said actions? No, but uh, yeah, it's not the IPAs of old where you know that bitterness would really hit you, but it's there. Um, you you see you feel it at the front uh, with that maltiness, and then yeah, a little bit of um, a little bit of that fruit. Uh, kind of coming in on the at the end. When what you do you s- got? Yeah, I was gonna say when you say fruit, what do, what are you thinking? Is there anything that's kind of there for you, or do you want to have a couple more sips? And- yeah, I just took another sip here. Okay, so let that sit. Yeah, and then I'll yeah, let me jump in here. Yeah, go um, for it. you know what? For six and a half, we were just talking about the booziness of it. I I am getting more booziness than I thought I would. Hmm. Um, because that's kind of like what's cutting it at the front. Right? Stand corrected. Yeah, yeah, honestly. So the six and a half is there um, for sure. Um, the hoppiness and 
I guess some of that sweetness is, is there uh, because the multi piece of it. Um, but I am getting, again, it, it, it's the finish of that, I would almost say more of a melon finish. Yeah, I think so. I think just it's got that. And it's not powerful, right? Like the fruit flavor. It's not. No, but melons aren't. No, like they're in not. The, in the fruit world, I, I feel like a melon is a, a, just a nice kind of like melancholy. It's uh, very subdued. Very subdued. Right? Yeah. Like a palate cleanser. Yeah. Almost. Yeah, yeah. A nice little refreshing hit on the on the back end. Yeah. Mostly water, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, anyways, yeah, I, I, I think I think I would agree that it has like that, you know, kind of hint of sweetness from like a honeydew or something like that. Yeah. And I mean, we're no Margaret Atwood, so that, that's coming across clear. Uh, <laughs> but it, yeah, it's 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 nice. Um, I'm a I'm a little bit taken back about the booziness on the front. And that's I, that's kind of my only hang up right now. Yeah, it is a lot more than I was expecting. Like we mentioned, six and a half, that's that's mm. average. But I, I'm not sure why. But something is is making that come through more than more than we would have expected. Yeah, we'll see how it kind of goes. As I mean, I mean that that was the initial sip too. Yeah, that might change. And again, to use your word, subdue throughout the the the, the drinking of the same beer. Um, top five flavor profiles. You want to jump into that now? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll do this one. And yeah, then you do this one. You can I'll, get the second one. And I'll make just noises as you go through. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what kind of Because I'm going to be drinking. You know, right, time, drinking noises, I'll, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, number one is Hoppy. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> also, actions yeah. with your noises. Yeah, yeah, nobody can see the hand gestures. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, w- I would agree. I think they're hot. I think it's Hoppy. Yeah, I th- I think it's hoppy. I wouldn't put it as number one for me personally, but I, I do think that this is a good kind of hop driven um, beer in a good way because a lot of flavors coming out of that. Yeah, um, number two is smooth. Um, there is smoothness to it. Uh, again, I'm not sure that I would put this as, as number two. Yeah, I would agree. I don't even know if it'd be on my top five. That's fair. Um, number three is clean. Uh, and I was actually thinking as I took the first few steps, this, this comes off pretty clean. So I, I, I'm okay with clean there. Yeah. Um, it, it is clean. Uh, I think when we talk about mouthfeel, I'm getting some good mouthfeel with it, but I, I think for a beer, um, of this stature, if you will. Yeah. Uh, it, it is very clean. It's, it's nice. Yep. Number four is caramel. Um, I do not get caramel from this one bit. Yeah, I think maybe this is an illusion, uh, based off of its its copper tone and those malts uh, that are mentioned. Um, Agreed. People think, oh, this should taste like caramel, basically, because you have a copper tone, right? Yeah. I yeah, I don't I don't think caramel should be in there right now. No. Yep. And the last one is fruity, um, which you know we've talked about, kind of uh, too broad, right? So very broad. Uh, uh, suggestions yeah. i mean carl and i have the same kind of thought on this one like i would throw melon in there for sure yep um i do like the idea of the stone fruit uh being in there uh i i do get that i would consider this probably boozy yep i think so we um, we we have mentioned that and i would say bitter even i'd put in there bitter yeah 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 and again not 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 too bitter. Not overpowering. Not harsh. <laughs> All right, harsh yeah, bitter. Not harsh. <laughs> but I, I think again, um, when we talk about this beer, it was it's well balanced is how it was described. Right. Um, we've had some really good well balanced beers. I think this is approaching that ter- territory uh, yeah. because again, like you do have different levels as as it kind of goes through. Um, so I think. Overall, it's it's balanced. You do have a kind of a boozy kind of hit, and then it kind of relaxes a bit into more of that stone fruit and then melon kind of finish, which then has you coming back again. So yeah. I think that's a, a good way of describing the balance is um, when I think balance, there's two ways, right? Way number one is that it's equal throughout. Right. Balance could also mean that there's highs and lows and 
when you look at the full beer and its composition is that a high can also be um, balanced with a low. And right. then you have that kind of equilibrium. That's what I see with this one is it's more of like we have a, a high, we have a low, we have a high, we have a low, which then makes it balanced. That makes sense to me. Thank you. I'm glad you said that because I was like, <laughs> I'm going on a tangent. And if, if if at the end of this thing, you're like, dude, you you are not right, I'd be like, I'd be devastated. I mean, Carl's scratching his head, but it doesn't really matter. He, I think in, in post-production, Carl's going to listen to it and be like, oh, okay, I got yeah. you. He just needs to listen to it a couple more times. And just if anybody didn't get it, it's uh, click back 15 seconds twice and yeah, about that. replay yeah. it. Um, untapped user thoughts. Enough of me. And on to you, Chris. So first one's from Dylan M. Uh, Dylan 8 is Dylan's handle. Uh, and Dylan's... What did Dylan eat? <laughs> this beer. Ah, uh, okay. Drank well, it. I'll but, let you have it. Uh, close enough, right? Uh, so Dylan said, multi and sweet IPA, potent. Uh, so short and sweet from Dylan. Uh, 3.5 out of 5. All right, and uh, next, Jordan F, and Jordan's handle is Jordan9. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Jordan27, though there is a number, stated <laughs> the following. Big toffee maltness mixed with warm orange spritz and light cinnamon. <laughs> really? 3.5 out of 5. I, uh, I, I cannot disagree with Jordan more. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? Like, okay, not to come across like pretentious or anything like that, but like when you're the craft beer connoisseurs, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I think people get a little bit obtuse, right? You know, and it's and I'm not I, hey, Jordan. If you tasted that, good on you. The orange spritz is is compelling. Um, not a melon, not a stone fruit. No. So, I don't think really what TWB is going for, but again, different strokes for different folks. Light and cinnamon. Cinnamon? No, there is no cinnamon in this beer. Did not get the cinnamon. (laughs) Didn't I? Didn't did not get it. I did not get. I did not get that. And then the uh, again, big toffee maltness. That's like maybe the closest of all of them. Yeah, for sure. I could give them a quarter of a point for that. Yeah, I mean, I'd say. Again, it's um, 14 clicks back, uh, 15 seconds at a time. <laughs> and there's flavor profiles in there that might help. Yeah. Teach their own. That's all right. Um, okay. So it's time for our ratings. I'm going to have to do this a little bit different here for Carl just because he's, he's using a different system. Um, so we're going to kind of put this in here. I'm going to give uh, a rating on this myself, and then I'll do Brett's, and then Chris, why don't you do yours and Carl's? How about that? Sounds good. Okay. Uh, Carl, start putting yours in. Um, so I am going to go ahead and I'm going to give this a 3.5. And Brett has got his rating actually in here. He's left it. So generous. What a great guy. Um, and Brett's going to give it a 3.75. So he has had this beer before. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, lucky him. Um, <laughs> lucky us. You know, we're yeah. the ones that are lucky. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. We're drinking it now. So we are drinking we're lucky. It now. Uh, so you gave it a 3.5, Tyler? I gave it a 3.5, <clears throat> and well, then Brett's 3.75. Okay, so I'm also going to give it a 3.5. Um, you you beat me to the punch there. Uh, now, producer Carl, he's giving it a 4. He, oh he enjoyed goodness. this beer. Very good. Did enjoy it. Do you want to tell us what the overall score is there Well, Carl does the math? I do. So uh, just, he's just putting it in now. So it's a 3.6875. Uh, overall, which of course we will round up to a 3.75. God, we're so nice like that. Um, all right, good beer number one. Yeah. Let's see if beer number two is going to be equally as good. We are back. We are back. And the uh, we're going to have a second beer. You know what? We should. We should. Can I actually call something out right now? Okay. Wow, without hesitation, eh? Just let me have free roam? <laughs> yeah, why not? I want to say I'm very proud of you. Oh, thank you. No problem. Not sure why. Do you want me to explain why? Yeah. Um, you have handled that chair way better than <laughs> Brett has ever handled that chair. There's been less creak, creak, 
I was going to say, no squeaks in no today's squeaks, episode. No squeaks, no creaks. Now, I might have jinxed it. I wanted to, you know, put it out at beer number two. So that you way may have. There's some time that you could still fail this. But Carl and I were talking, actually, in between uh, beer one and beer two. Okay. And we said, you know what? You've kept that chair under control. Guess it's time for a spot switch. A spot switch? We haven't seen a spot <laughs> switch in years. <laughs> the good old spot switch. Oh, classic. You know what? That is something we should do, but um, it's not It's not in order right now. No. What is in order? Well, the second beer is. Is it? Yeah, it is the order of the sleeping car. God, sometimes I hate us. <laughs> The setups are just so terrible. It's a little tacky, but it's all good. I like that. Uh, But you know what you will really like? I will like this. This is an English porter. That's what I said. A a classic spot switch. (laughs) Uh, Which uh, was renamed uh, back in February from the Pullman's Porter. Which you mentioned earlier, actually. Which, Which I mentioned earlier. After the birds and the bees, you can't have a Pullman. Nope. Don't be pulling men. <laughs> so this one comes in at 5.6% ABV. Let me take a, a quick peek. Uh, that does match up with the can, uh, but unlisted IBUs. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. So again, uh, TWB is doing it. Doing it right here. Give me some notes here to work off of. Lots of um, info. That we can go ahead and we can say yay or nay to them. Um, first one, Aroma is the dark chocolate slightly sweet. Okay. Appearance, um, dark garnet, uh, pours clear, creamy white head. Okay, look, going to look for that. Going to look okay. for that for sure. Okay. Um, one of the big things I, I'm kind of interested in is the flavor. So we got notes of dark chocolate, slightly grainy, low bitterness. Okay. Okay, low, they, low they bitterness again. They love to keep that bitter low. <laughs> uh, Melfield, we're going to be looking for fine bubbles. Um, okay. okay. Very good. Low level of carbonation, which would kind of go hand in hand with the fine bubbles. Uh, silky with a slightly dry finish. So that's the mouthfeel. Okay. So we'll okay. have to see if that uh, kind of performs with it. Um, before I hand it over to you, Chris, I'm going to just continue with the mic here. Um, this can art. Simple, clean, elegant. Yes. That's how I'd kind of describe that. I, I like this a lot. You know, you might expect a car. No car. There's 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 no car in this one, um, but I do like it. And it does say, you know, um, named after the first black railway union on the continent. Our order of the sleepy, uh, sorry, sleeping car porter celebrates these civil rights and labor leaders. That's huge. But that, I think that's the one thing about this is that um, hopefully the beer does the talking, but this is very clean um, can art. I, li- I like it a lot, actually. Yeah, a little bit of uh, texture to the label as well. Yeah. I like that. Very nice. Good contrast points. I like it. Whoever did the uh, design, whichever six of you and or if you farmed it out, great job. <laughs> whoever did the outsourcing? Yeah. <laughs> great job. That. Good job organizing that. All right. So with this beer on untap, there are 20 check-ins. Um, and Oh, she with, fresh, fresh. Oh, very fresh. She knew. There's an average of 3.73 out of 5 and 1, 5 out of 5. Now, with that being said, we say this is fresh, fresh, this is new, but it's not. Right? It's not quite. And, um, and I, I, I want to kind of take a look. Uh, Carl. Bring up the numbers for the uh, the Pullman, if you would, and uh, we'll continue on. So you said 3.73 out of 5? That's right. And 1, 5 out of 5? There is just one. Perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my segment, and Carl's going to look up the information on the Pullman Porter because they do go hand in hand. A lot of people on Untapped might not know that intel. They may not. So grab your can. Grab your glass. Grabbing my can. Grabbing thank, my glass. Thank you so much. Let's open her up. So Carl's got the information. Do you want me to go first, or oh. do you do you want to go ahead with your segment? You know, do your segment. Let's keep it keep it in line. Let me just do my thing here. So um, we are drinking this porter out of a nonic pint. So make sure to use your proper glassware. 
Very good. So as previously mentioned, and thank you to Carl, uh, one of the best producers we've had um, on this episode. Uh, <laughs> uh, so the Pullman Porter on Untapped had 510 check-ins, so slightly uh, more than the 20. Uh, so I'd say we have a, a, a good old combination. You okay there, old slippy hands? No, I'm good. I'm good. That your, was a, Your left uh, hand looks a little bit... Uh, <laughs> It's the best way I could describe it. <laughs> it's a little. Uh, you know there's some. To, there's some beer on it. Do you want to wipe it down? No, I'm good. Here, I'm good. Wipe it. On, wipe it on this, would you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you could only see. If you could only see. Um, okay. Yeah. So 510 for the Pullman's Porter, and there's a 3.78. So let's do a slightly lower. 530 in the check-ins, um, and we'll drop down to 3.77 overall. How about that? <laughs> Love it. I, I think that's where we're kind of looking at. Um, in terms of five of fives, uh, can I move my thing, please? Thank you so much. <laughs> um, there was uh, 12 five out of fives on, okay. the, on the Pullman, so that would give us a total of 13. A 13 L- lucky, three. lucky 13. Then. Lucky 13. Um, what are you smelling? What are you sniffing? What do you got? Oh, my God. You're actually you're doing it. What I do you am. got on the eyes? Classic well, porter. Well, it, it's dark. Yeah, classic porter. Uh, you mentioned a, like a white head. Um, definitely got that, but it's it's coming down uh, a little bit. She sure is. She sure is. What what do you smell in? Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting some coffee notes out of this. Yeah, coffee, um, dark um, chocolate for sure. Definitely the chocolate. Like I feel like those are kind of the predominant two in that is is the there's a there's a coffee, dark chocolate, I, which you would expect. I'm a little bit concerned. Uh, okay. Not necessarily for for this beer because, like, I'm not a coffee guy. We we've discussed this. The dark chocolate. If I feel like the smell is going to be dark chocolate, I really kind of hope that's in the beer. Yes, me too. And I find a lot of the times with with porters, um, that dark chocolate would also lend me to a mouthfeel that I might not get. So okay. I, I'm, I'm looking, if I think dark chocolate, I think smooth, I feel silky, I feel more mouthfeel, kind of the creaminess aspect. Right. I'm concerned with this just based off of what we've already kind of seen with like fine bubbles, low carbonation. Is is it going to be more of a creamier side or is it going to be more of the watery down kind of aspect? Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, they describe the mouthfeel as silky. So I, I would hope there's that kind of creaminess, you know, silkiness, that sort of thing coming through. Um, but I think that this would be probably a perfect time for you to try it and find out. Wow. I'm going to call you two wheels because that was a great segue. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I just got that. I remembered what a segue was. <laughs> that was... Yeah, that was popular. The people a while movers ago. of the future. Yeah, not so much. Well, we don't know. The, the future is, <laughs> is infinite. Yep, there's still the future. Okay, I'm into it. If you want to get into it, let me know. Um, there is kind of the the burntness, if you will. There, there is kind of like yep. a. You know what? I, I I'm going to retract that. Actually, I'm going to remove burntness from the record, please. Um, I'm going to come back with the roastiness. Okay. I like that. I feel I like, like I'm that. not, I'm not doing the beer justice and, and I apologize TWB, uh, for, for saying burntness because, um, I feel like if you say burnt, people think that burnt equals off pudding, right? Not necessarily the case. I feel like there's good roastiness to this, um, up front. It's like when you are doing a chicken breast on the barbecue and you get those like, hmm kind of again. hard hard flex here you know i don't have a barbecue right now wow <laughs> insensitive well, but, right. but no, you no, know no, what i mean no. where, where you have like the char right yeah, yeah. Uh, on on the on the meat like that's kind of what you mean by burnt like that's not a bad thing sure but it it, it just adds flavor when people so, call something cajun when you know they just burnt the heck out of it <laughs> yeah but this ain't that that is, to say that at all. No, this is not Cajun. And, and I want to make that quite clear, right? Like, there's the difference between like burnt and 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 heavily roasted. Yes, I like uh, the retraction. I like I like roasty. Um, I do like that. Um, 
bit there is bitterness to this. Yeah. Um the there is dark chocolate there for sure. And dark chocolate inherently is bitter, so you know, it's gonna gonna provide some of that bitterness. I, I think that's a really good point. Actually. Yeah. It's like that bitterness is I think drawn from the dark chocolate flavor profile. Yeah. But um overall, nice beer. Um, you know, it they did say it has a low level low level of carbonation, which I would agree with, um, which is nice in a porter. You don't really want your porters and stouts to have high carbonation. That really kind of throws it off uh, with the flavors that come through. So, yeah. Yeah, I to kind of dovetail off your comment there, fine bubbles, low level of carbonation. <clears throat> I would have expected this to be a little bit more creamy or maybe not the intent of TWB and so I, do, I don't want to kind of count that against it um, because the dark chocolate is there and I just think when you think dark chocolate kind of flavor profile I think that innately that kind of corresponds with a bit more creaminess yeah like, I'd be okay if there's a little bit more um, tackiness on the mouthfeel you know what I mean like if, if it hung and it just kind of stuck there a bit yeah this finishes pretty clean and pretty pretty crisp um i'd be okay if it, if it lingered like i feel like this is a good kind of um i know we're now moving into summer months um and usually porter stouts kind of see their their way out and summers yeah. kind of come in and, and loggers and and that i'm i'm actually okay with this one kind of hanging around um this would be a good kind of sit by a fire i was just gonna say that no you weren't <laughs> Were you actually? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like this is a good sit by the fire kind of beer. If they can change it from a little bit more of the, the – give me more mouthfeel. That's what I'm asking for. Just a little bit more mouthfeel. Let me sit there and, and really enjoy this. Um, smelling the smoke of a fire but not having the smoke in the beer. This is good. I like this. This is this is well done. Now, before we get to the, the flavor profiles, I feel like based on what you are just saying, Tyler – we should probably draw on what you know our friend Brett would usually say. This would be really good with some lactose. You know, I tried. I don't know. I listen to every fiber in my body not to say lactose. Like as I was going through, I was like, "Don't say lactose. Don't say lactose. Don't do it." Because that's not what this beer is probably meant to be. No, no, it's not. And like honestly, I think that. Oftentimes, I'll hear, like, what's the difference between a stout and a porter, right? Because yep. they're very yep. similar. Yep. And looking at the ingredients of this beer, it's got just your your general five ingredients, right? Your water, barley, oats, hops, yeast, okay? Right. So, I would say the difference between, you know, a stout and a porter would be if you added vanilla, if you added actual chocolate into this beer, I would say that would push it into a stout. Right. Whereas yeah. by just leaving yeah. it as these main ingredients, you're kind of keeping it as that porter. So I agree. I don't think I, vanilla. It's not the intent of this, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's or lactose is not intended to be in this beer. So I think that's okay. I, I'm, I'm fine with it. Yeah. I, I do think, though, the creaminess needs to, to, kind of be upped and I don't think it necessarily has to come from the lactose, right? Like yep. let's, let's push it a bit. Let's, um, I, I, I like it. it. It is a very good beer. It is. I, I, like I, I, I want to make that quite clear. And, and, and I think that, uh, when we see these top five flavor profiles, cause I've seen them. Thank you, Carl. Um, we're going to see some things that come up here. And I, I just feel like if we just dial it up just a bit, it, it, Ooh, she's good. Um, speaking of those top five flavor profiles, let's uh, let's dive into those. I will give them to you, and you will respond accordingly. Please. Excellent. Carl, by all means, uh, start jotting your notes down as you've enjoyed this beer. And uh, Brett? Okay. Um, number one, Rich. Hmm. I wouldn't necessarily say that it's Rich. Um I, I think I understand where people are coming from, but yeah, it definitely would not be my number one. Okay. I I don't disagree, but I don't agree. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Okay. Yeah. Um, number two, smooth. Yeah, it's smooth. It's nice. Again, not yeah. maybe not number two, but yeah, it's smooth. 
Yeah, I think it, I think for a porter and what it is, it is it's a very smooth beer. Um, number three, chocolate. Yeah, there's there's definitely chocolate flavor. I would say maybe less than I was anticipating. Um, that's okay. But but yeah. there but it's there. I think that's kind of where I was kind of going with it, right? It's like that dial it up. Yeah. And I I kind of hate this, and I hate this about us. You know, you know what I mean? No? <laughs> hate what? <laughs> so we get to these points. It's like, okay, well, flavor profile, chocolate. Yeah. And it is there. It is. There, there's no dispute in that. And it's like, oh, well, we would have liked to see more chocolate. Mm. Dial it up a bit more, right? Right. But that's not what this beer is necessarily. Right. Like it, it, it does hit that flavor profile. And I think that's part of like our understanding of, of the different beers and what we like to see or where it's at or we, where we'd like it to be. But that's not necessarily the intent necessarily of the brewery. Right. And no, we've, we've, we've had these discussions with brewers before. It's like, we'd like to see this. But just because, you know, three guys and a, and a producer say, hey, we'd like to see this, doesn't mean that's what everybody wants to see. For sure. And we understand that. Um, but I do think like that chocolate is, is there. I'd like to see it dialed up, which then I also think this is where I'm kind of going with this. I'm going to, I'll get to number four in a second, but I feel like it's important to kind of mention this at this point. Number one, rich. Number two, smooth. Number three, chocolate. Yeah. You dial up chocolate, chocolate becomes one, rich and smooth fall suit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it's kind of like this, um, I don't know, mastermind thinking of how this beer is going to kind of progress. And maybe it, it doesn't sit in the same recipe that it is. Again, very good. Love what you guys have done with it. Um, you dial up that chocolatey kind of feel. You add a bit more of the rich smoothness kind of comes kind of secondary mm -hmm. without adding lactose. Um, <laughs> it's nice. Uh, number four is coffee. Yeah, see, I'm not really getting much coffee. Really? No. I am. Yeah? Yeah, and I, I feel like that's kind of, again, the juxtaposition of where you're at to where I'm at because you drink a lot of coffee, so it might be something that you're kind of, you're more used to. Yeah, Whereas true. because it's it's newer to my uh, my palate. You kind of notice I it more. Pick up yeah. on it a bit more, right? That's fair. But again, if you add a little bit more of that, that chocolate kind of flavor profile, I think the coffee kind of back ends it, and it, it, it's it's nice. Um, other things that Carl said, richness. Um, yeah. I think we've kind of talked about that before. Is like It does have kind of richness. Um, bitter. Roasty. Uh, roasty. Dark. Yeah. yeah like a, a dark roast. If we if we could kind of get into specifics. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. Uh, how about thoughts from other people on Untapped for Let, this one? Let's see this. I mean, I know Carl's anxious about the time, so I... Yeah. But it's been a good conversation, Carl. Sorry, so Carl. Relax. Um, first one is Andrew S. Handle is not anywhere close to Andrew S. Um, but it's run underscore W underscore size horse. Uh, so I believe that's run with scissors. Yep. Uh, stated rich coffee and chocolate. <laughs> Basic and simple. Straight to it. Saving us some time. Four out of five. All right. The next one is from Hop D. The Hop Doc is the handle. Said coffee, cocoa, and light roast. Done in a proper dry style. Mild bitterness and super enjoyable. Underrated. And Hop D gave it four out of five. Thanks. Just trying to get a swallow in there. Yeah, I heard that. Um, you know what? No, I okay. don't. You know that's fair. I I agree. I think it is underrated, and the reason why I say that is because the overall average of again the Pullman Porter was three point seven eight, and we saw yep. a little bit of a change for you know order of the sleeping car. Um. So I think it is underrated. I like this. I like it. I think it can be amplified. I think that there's definitely um, a little bit of a, a, a notch up who can go with it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give it a four. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I am going to give it a little bit higher than you actually, Tyler. I'm okay. going to give it a 4.25. Very nice. Uh, and producer mm -hmm. Carl, uh, he's giving it a 3.5. Okay. Um, we have no rating from Brett on this one he has not had this one before 
And he's not here. He's not here. And so do you think I gave him the beers ahead of time? I know you did not because they're in the fridge. <laughs> they are in the fridge. He will get them, but his rating will not show. So the overall score is a 3.916666666666. I feel like I haven't done that for a while. Um, you haven't done that for a while. <laughs> which we are going to round up to a four. That is probably one of our better beers overall. I of the season, For right? the season, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Uh, great beer. Appreciate uh, everybody uh, coming together on that. And um, again, we apologize for this episode being a little bit delayed. Um, but yeah, that concludes our review, our, our review of TW Beers. Um, again, we appreciate everybody. And uh, coming up next, we're going to be discussing kind of our summer plans, thoughts, feelings, memories. Let's do it. All right, we're back. We are back. For a themed conversation. Yeah. You know what? I know we had that time off there. It's good to be back. It is. I've had a great time with you. And and, and Carl, um, if Brett was here, I'd have an okay time. But like, <laughs> I've had a great time with you guys. And some good beers. Some good great, beers, good great, company. Great beers. You know, it's it's funny because I was just uh, messaging one of the individuals about um, a future event um, in our uh, kind of like, um, you know, intermission, if you will. Right. And our, it's, it's it's good. Th- that, that like eight seconds that you had there, I, you were messaging? Dude, you don't know what I can do with eight seconds. Um, <laughs> well, I can fire off. I've, I've heard. Yeah. I can fire off like four or five messages. Um, yeah. But it's good. It's good. It's it's nice to talk to people in, in the industry, and um, yeah, it's I I feel I feel good. Good. It's nice to feel good. Good. All right. So we're talking summer. We're talking all things summer. Love it. Summer current, summer past, summer present. What does summer bring? What does summer give? What do you have for summer? <laughs> Is, is this a poem? <laughs> I, I don't know if it works. It works. It certainly ain't no haiku, but all right. Um, yeah, we're we're kind of in the midst of it, right? We're we're, we're, we're kind of ramping up. Um, I mean, technically, it's not even. I mean, it feels like summer, but you like summer. Yep. <laughs> but like. We're we're still a month away till like the official official summer. It, it's true. Um, I work with lovely people um, in my my division. Um, maybe not countywide, but uh, certainly in my division. And we actually had this conversation about the the May two four weekend kind of really just like jumps you. It's um, like the official unofficial start. The right? official unofficial start. There you go. Of of summer, and we had such a beautiful weekend. We did. Um, phenomenal weather. Unreal. And we talked about some of the things that kind of like, you know, slow this podcast down, like the gardening. Um, but yeah, it, it was actually really great to come back from uh, the, the May long weekend. Uh, anniversary weekend uh, for some. Ooh. <laughs> <I know. laughs> and uh, I, I did nothing. Um, <laughs> and, and actually, I had the conversation with some of my coworkers and see what they did. And, and I mean, again, some good, some bad, but all in all, the weather was great. Yeah, it was. Uh, so without further ado, um, I, I implore everybody here to give us their kind of summer plans. Maybe uh, discuss what you've got going on this summer. Uh, Carl, you're up uh, with this as well. Unfortunately, Monsieur Brett <laughs> did not provide any content. That's what we're calling him now. Well, he got jazzed it up a bit. He did ask. He did say, hey, I'll add my content. He did. And guess what he did not do? He did not add it. There, We are sans content. <laughs> sans Brett content. Sans, sans Brett, Monsieur Brett content. Monsieur <laughs> Brett content. Uh, what should we? Uh, okay, so I'm going to get started here kind of with like summer plans. What I've got Please. planned for summer of 24. What a year. It was the summer of 24. I bought my first six string. <laughs> I feel I like we could write a song. We could. Um, I did not buy or or make a a, a song. So, um, yeah, I've I've got baseball on the horizon. Okay, I've got some work events. Um, now actually having a full kind of like summer at this house. Yeah, there's a lot to do. Home ownership is not. I don't know why anybody's like, hey, you got to buy a home. We're eager to get a home. What, dude? I lost a car. My car died. 
my dryer died and I'm still out here making a garden? You know what? There is never a weekend that goes by where I don't have something to do to keep the house, you know, maintained. You have not invited me over to, to the pool. The um, pool is closed still, so. What? Yeah. You're behind. I am behind. There's I'm a so lot to sorry. do. <laughs> invite me over to open your pool up. Sunday. Is it Sunday? Saturday or Sunday. Okay. One of those two. You invite me over. I will help you with that. I'm just in a ball tournament. So I can. <laughs> Saturday, it looks like rain. Um, yeah, so there's a lot to do actually with yard work. I, I don't know if you noticed, I did uh, some edging work on the. Uh, oh, the I driveway. didn't see that. No. Take a look on your way out. Beautiful. Nice. Uh, trimmer. Again, uh, I had asked the father in law for the, both his edger and his, his trimmer uh, because we do not have those at this time. <laughs> So that, that was great to kind of do. We did a, a, a garage project, clean that up. Um, but yeah, a lot of work in the garden. We we built a 16 um, by 10 garden. Yeah. Uh, not I, inches. I, I saw it. feet. Yeah. Uh, Got the tour. Yeah. Yeah. I like giving the tour. I'm, I'm proud of our house and the work that we've done. And uh, we put a lot of time and, and, and effort into it. Um, so that's kind of one of the big kind of like summer plans is just maintaining the garden, the grass, the house. I'm so thankful for these these solar panels. I made five hundred and thirty dollars last month on on those. Wow, not Brad. Pretty good. Not Brad. Um, <laughs> beyond that, some light traveling, um, a lot of baseball. Uh, hopefully, more podcast and uh, opportunities to get out there and uh, visit with fans and uh, breweries, brewers, all that jazz. So, um, kind of summer plans. That's that's what I've got. Nice, Christopher. What do you got? Well, once the pool gets open, I'll swim. And I will as well. <laughs> you will. Uh, we are we are making sure that the pool gets used a lot this summer. Um, or else? My my eldest daughter is in kindergarten this year, and so there's a lot of a lot of school friends. Uh, oh, is there? And with that comes, uh, <laughs> get over to the pool and use the pool. <laughs> That's <laughs> so, huge. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have have some. Uh, some people over to the pool. Now, I'm not in kindergarten, but I've been described as somebody with the mental capacity of somebody in kindergarten. Do I qualify? Yeah, you can come over. Oh my god, thank you so much. <laughs> you can definitely swim. What about Carl? Uh, you were, yeah, Carl. Yeah, you can come. <laughs> Uh, maybe we'll, we tried to do this a couple years ago, but we'll, we'll maybe try to do it again. Uh, yeah. craft beer connoisseurs kind of pool party at, at the house. Recording in poolside. There, oh, that would there be actually go. pretty sweet. It would be. Keep the water away from the equipment though. Yeah, a little saran wrap. Yeah. You know, she'll help. Uh, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll drop a, a, a little bit of, of news on the plan. So, um, July is going to be a paternity leave month for me. Why? Why? Because I can. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to be spending time with the kids. Again, pool, beach, um, lots of stuff outside. Pretty that's good. that's kind of the plan. So can I can I ask questions? Yes. <laughs> All right. So what's that uh, timeline look for for you then? What 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 are we looking at for uh, like the pat leave? July second to twenty six. Inclusive. <laughs> I love the technical. I, lo- I love it more than you even know. That's very good. So July is uh, is. I don't want to uh, not to be disrespectful, but like, is it is an open month uh, for you to kind of enjoy different activities in? Yeah, yeah. It's Pretty good. Uh, yeah. It, and, and it's going to be nice because my my wife is uh, still on her maternity leave for the first oh, two weeks you have of to July. Hang out with your wife? Yeah. I. Cool. That's cool. That's no, it'll really be cool. nice. It'll be nice. So the first two weeks will be the four of us kind of together, and then she'll be back to work for the second two weeks that I'm off. Um, yeah, it's about time she went back to work. <laughs> I just mean like it's good that you could enjoy some of that time with your kids by yourself. Yeah, you know yeah what I mean, is. like it's 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 nice that you guys can split that up. And it's also nice because uh, I don't know if you know this, but. When your kids are in school, okay. there's no school in the summer. Um, okay. And so instead of sending my daughter to camp, I'm just there to... Daddy, to, daddy camp. To take care. Yeah. 
That's very nice. Yeah. Uh, you know, that that's huge. That's, uh, that's nice for you guys to step up and do that. Yeah. Um, so thank I you, forward, federal government. Yeah. And I, as well, also look forward to coming over um, in that month. Maybe take some vacation time? I do have some time booked up, I think, <laughs> in that month. I could come over, let's say, 11 o'clock. Yeah. Have a couple birds. Yeah. A couple pints. Bur- the the barbecue's ready. The, the pool's ready. Or it will be. Is there, yeah, the pool ain't ready, boy. All right. Cool. Sounds good. Good. Uh, uh, we got. We just got producer here. So when I, I'll dive into that. Summer plans. Keep it simple. Baseball, traveling, new patio. New patio. At the house, I guess. They're ripping out the deck. And oh. They're, they're putting in what I believe is a patio. So Carl's wife is putting him to work. I don't think that either the wife or Carl are doing that. Oh, work. hired help. Okay. <laughs> hired help, which mm. is, I mean, again, it doesn't matter to you get it done. It's true. It, it, it'll probably look better with, <laughs> and, I mean, you know. Not, yeah, I, I know what you know. Carl's looking at you like, what do you mean? <laughs> you explain yourself. Carl, I mean, you come know. on. You know. Come on. Um, which is good. And I think Carl does have some plans for, uh, again, tending to the garden. Yes. Uh, like you, he likes his uh, vegetables and fruits. You know, it's funny because a lot of people didn't think I liked vegetables and fruits. And then when they said, what? You're putting a big garden like that? I said, yeah. Because I like vegetables and fruits. I don't know why people I don't know why people perceive me as. Maybe otherwise. because you don't eat anything. Yeah, but that's anything. <laughs> Gosh. Uh <sighs> All right, let's move on. Favorite summer activity. Oh. Um, okay. So I think this has kind of changed. So for myself, visiting, you know, breweries, we like that. Yeah, we like that. It's kind of toned down a little bit, but we like that. Yeah. Um, I love getting invited over to people's pools. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> But uh, no, listen, I, there's an open invitation anytime. You will retract that. No, I won't. <laughs> you will regret saying that. No, I won't. Uh, I love that. I, I do appreciate that. I don't but like when the pool sits unused for weeks. I will literally be over there and like I will drive over there after work. Please. I will. Honestly, like just go in the backyard and use it. You don't even have to knock on the door or anything. Uh, you know, I won't. <laughs> no, I, I I do enjoy that. I think it's it's um, it's great to kind of hang out with friends and and be out and about and and doing stuff. Um, so yeah, I like to do that. I know baseball is going to really take up a bunch of my time too on some weekends. Um, dedicated to the podcast, obviously. Uh, that's a favor, you know, a favorite summer activity because who doesn't like a little brosh, guys? That's me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Again, I like I like uh, being by the pool as well. Uh, something that we haven't done for quite a long time that I'd like to get into, probably not this year, maybe a few years from now, is camping. Uh, I haven't been camping for a long time, and I would like to go camping. Um, you know, will you go camping with me? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's so hard to find people. I, we like we love camping. Yeah, I I love it, and like. You know, sitting by the campfire at night, just kind of being outdoors, you know, having beers, obviously. Chris, will you go camping with me? Yes. Will it be this year? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go <cool>. on. <laughs> Honestly, I, I, if you go to go camping, let me know. You have to schedule it ahead of time. Yes. Like, it is fierce competition out there, especially in some of these provincial parks. It is. It really is. We will go camping. Yeah. And I'm one of those people that, you know, a lot of people say, oh, tent camping. I don't like sleeping on an air mattress. Like, Let's I, do it. I, I like to go tent camping. I am, I'm down. Like, if you're going to go camping, like, go all out, right? We will camp in the back of our vehicle. We will camp in a tent. We will do it all. Like, and when I say camping, I mean, like, it's glamping. Not because we have a massive RV, because we got lights, we've got tents, we've got cooking facilities. Like, we are ready. <laughs> we will camp the shit out of this. <laughs> you want to camp? Anybody want to camp out there? You haul at your boy. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Let's do it. 
I you're excited. Dude, you're you're I, fired up. The thing, like, I love it. I will. I love making a fire. I love it. I love it all. You love dancing over the fire, dude. I am <laughs> walking with stump. Give me the opportunity to create a fire and a masterpiece, and I will do that. You I will. take pride in my my fire. I've seen it activities. People will say, "Dude, this is unhinged," and I'll say. <laughs> I will dance with the fire. I will be there for you. Tyler, the flame's not supposed to be 10 feet tall. The, the flame <laughs> should be 20 feet tall. And let's let's enjoy it. I am ready for it. Like, dude, I don't think you understand. Like, if you give me... I will take a week off to go camping. Listen. The, I, I don't take time off. The provincial parks open their booking system five months in advance of the date, I think. So... You don't need to tell me. I am ready to go. <laughs> okay. Let, let's do it next next year. <laughs> I will hold you to that, Carl. Put it in the book. It's it's on record. All right, go ahead. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything else okay, other than camping. that. Yeah, <laughs> and, and pool. Yeah. All right, uh, you take Carl's on this one. Favorite. Yeah. So favorite. Carl likes baseball, like you, uh, and uh, visiting breweries. Very Big good. fan of visiting breweries. Tis the, tis the time. It is uh, patios at breweries. I mean, that's great. Hear me out on this one. Okay. Camping. <laughs> tent set up. Yep. We've got two and a half tents. Right? Okay. My tent, your tent. We've got a dining Kitchen room. Tent. Dining room tent. Mm, people are <laughs> loving it. We hop in the vehicle. You and I. Just you and I. We go off to a brewery. Yeah. Have a couple points. Yeah. We come back. Some to goes. A couple to goes for the lads. <laughs> We come back to the, 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 the location of the tenting. Okay? We cook up steaks. Yeah. We do that. Boom. Okay? We've got little little pies that we make on the fire pit. <laughs> S'mores, cooking, sizzling. Pies. You have you ever seen these? No. Oh, yeah. It's so simple to make. You get a little, little container, you put a little toast or whatnot down there, you throw it in like pie filling. <laughs> bada bing, bada boom, you got yourself a little little Campfire pie. <laughs> you know? Done. I, you, I, I feel like Carl is feeling like left out right now. Carl can come. <laughs> Carl, you're invited. At the end of the night, you've you've had good conversations. You had good pints from some of the brews that you stopped at beforehand. You and I. Nobody yeah. else. <laughs> you put the water onto the fire pit. Sizzles yeah. out. You Little hop. S- yeah. Some steam. Yeah. You go into your tent, you wake up in the morning, boom, bacon and eggs, done. Oh, love it. <laughs> Restart the fire. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, man. Honestly, I'm at peace. I love it. Uh, memories. Uh, mo- some of my favorite memories of uh, camping. <laughs> camping. <laughs> Loved it. Um, yeah, honestly, going up to Solid Beach, hanging out with my grandparents. Uh, we rented a trailer as well, but they had a trailer uh, that was a, a seasonal trailer there. So, again, like you, you get like your your toasted tomato bacon sandwich. Like it was, <laughs> it's the simple things that you you kind of look back on and and I don't know, kind of like relish in those moments and, and enjoy those. And those were some of the biggest memories. And we used to go out to like Solid Beach on the beach itself and get like. I don't know, 10, 15 people from the campground to go with us. Yeah. And it was always, okay, what are we going to do? Baseball. <laughs> it's, it's baseball. So we'd take a little wooden bat out there and we'd play baseball on the beach. Nice. And like, it's, it's moments like that, that I, 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 I miss. Yeah. You know, I, I truly do. And, uh, I, I spent most of my, my childhood growing up at Solo Beach and, I miss those times and the people that you met. And um, I, I mentioned, obviously, my, my grandfather passing away not too, too long ago. And uh, I, I spent several, several seasons, if you will, summers uh, being with my grandma and my grandpa up at, at Solo Beach. And they would pick me up and they would, we would drive there. And I got to know a lot of the people in the trailer park, mm-hmm. um, which to me, it was everything. Um one individual challenged me to cribbage and I absolutely wiped the floor with them. Um, there was like a 50 year age gap, but like those are the memories that kind of stand true. I remember so many things and so many people from, from that experience. And again, I think that's my tie to the camping aspect is yeah. 
Um, it's so you're in the moment. Yeah. You don't have to have your phone out. You can just, you can talk, you can reminisce. And uh, Carl saying, hey, Tyler, um, why don't you reminisce about we're at an hour and 10? So, uh, Chris, what do you got? Yeah, so in terms of memories, um, kind of thinking back, to, I used to spend a lot of time in the summer golfing, um, going to golf camps. Uh, don't golf too much uh, nowadays, but again, something I'd probably want to get back into a little bit more. Um, and as a kid, kind of just like riding bikes all, all over the place. Like I used to spend so much time riding my bike, you know, through forests, through all, all different streets and everything like that. So, um, those are some good memories. Um, in terms of Carl, uh, spent some time with some long distance ball tournaments, um, such as Frankenmuth, um, World tournaments, um, Huntsville tournaments, uh, and uh, some memories at the cottage. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. All right. God, it's got me sad. We'll see what uh, summer 2024 has in store for us. I'm almost looking forward to summer 2025 more now that I know that there might be a little camping trip on the horizon. Um, all right. We appreciate everybody sticking around for this uh this episode again thank you for your patience uh with us we'll be right back with our farewell all right that's all for today's episode but not enough camping i feel like we need <laughs> we need more camping in our life we do we we, we need to do some more we really do uh and so cheap too so i like, mean rather expensive it's like hundred dollars a night for for a campsite yeah, last time. yeah. uh anyways we digress we uh thank you again for listening keep on listening every other thursday as the craft beer connoisseurs release a new episode and on our off thursdays for a producer special absolutely so from all of us and producer carl i'm tyler and i'm chris and together we're the craft beer connoisseurs